Hi, and welcome to video 13 of the Quick Start series for the Analog Discovery 2. In this video, we'll go over the pattern generator. Pattern generators are used to send user-defined digital signals to circuits or projects. The pattern generator on the Analog Discovery 2 can be used to send several set patterns, such as clocks and pulses, as well as custom patterns. You can access the pattern generator through the 16 digital I.O. pins on the Analog Discovery 2. To open the pattern generator, click on the button labeled Patterns in the Waveforms 2015 navigation bar. Along the top, you'll see three familiar toolbars. File allows you to open new pattern generator instances, open an existing pattern generator configuration, save the current pattern generator instance, export the patterns in the pattern generator, and close the pattern generator itself. If you open a new instance, only one of them can be used at a time, and the others will be on standby. You can export the pattern generator data as an image, CSV, text, or TDMS file. The control menu gives you access to run and stop the pattern generator. The window menu lets you switch between any menu or tab that is open. The next toolbar provides control and settings for running the pattern generator. The run button allows you to run the pattern generator and will turn into the stop button once clicked. The rest of the toolbar is trigger settings. The drop down next to trigger allows you to select what type of trigger you want. You can select none, an external trigger, or one of the waveforms tools. You can also select the manual trigger option and trigger by clicking the manual trigger button on the bottom left hand of the window. The drop down next to wait lets you set a wait time of any value between 20 nanoseconds to 24 hours. This will prevent the pattern generator from running for the designated amount of time and then start. The drop down next to repeat allows you to set the amount of times you want the pattern to repeat. You can set this to any value between 1 and 30,000 cycles. If you check repeat trigger, the pattern generator will have to be triggered for the number of cycles you enter in the repeat box. The second toolbar provides the signal controls and plot settings. Clicking the green plus adds a pattern. You can select between adding a single signal, bus, or ROM logic. Clicking signal opens a small window that lets you pick the channels you want to add. You can select any single channel or add multiple channels by using the shift or control buttons. As an example, I'll add channels 15 through 12. Once you select the channels, click add to add them. Once you add them, various options for each signal will appear. We'll go over those later. Click the green plus and click bus to add a bus channel. The add bus window will appear. At the top of the window to the right of name, you can name your bus. In the box on the left side of the window are the channels you can add to your bus. If you highlight them and click plus, they will go into the box on the right and be included in your bus. In the drop down next to format, you can change how to enter and display the bus data. You can choose between binary, decimal, hexadecimal, vector, signed, ones complement, and twos complement. The drop down next to endianness lets you choose between most significant bit or least significant bit. Selecting most significant bit will assign the most significant bit to the top channel in the window on the right. Selecting least significant bit will assign the least significant bit to the top channel in the window on the right. The most significant bit and least significant bit boxes let you determine the indices used for the bus values. You can enter a value as high as 31 for MSB and a value as low as negative 32 for LSB. As an example, let's add an 8-bit bus with decimal format and MSB endianness. The MSB and LSB boxes will default to 7 and 0 respectively. Let's name the bus 7 seg. Click OK to add the bus to the grid. The last signal bus option is ROM logic, which can be used to visualize truth tables and test state machine logic. Click the green plus and select ROM logic to open the add ROM logic window. At the top of the box to the right of name, you can name your ROM logic channel. The drop down next to frequency lets you determine the sample frequency of the inputs. You can enter any value between 100 millihertz and 10 megahertz. Below that are two boxes. The left side is the inputs and the right side are the outputs. To add a channel to either side, click the respective green plus sign. The green arrow lets you reorder the channels. As an example, we'll add DIO 8 and 9 as an input and DIO 11 as an output. We can change the names of the channels by entering values in the name column. Next, we'll need to define the truth table. Click on the truth table tab. As an example, we'll fill in a simple AND truth table. 0 and 0 will yield 0, 0 and 1 will yield 0, 1 and 0 will yield 0, and 1 and 1 will yield 1. Once the table is filled in, you can click Add to add the ROM logic. Now that we've added channels, we can go over the channel settings. 
the red minus allows you to delete whatever channel is selected. The button with the paper and the pencil lets you edit the properties or parameters of the selected signal. Clicking Properties allows you to edit the name and channel selections, the name and channel selections in Format Indianness, or the Properties tab, depending on if it's a single channel, bus, or ROM logic respectively. Clicking Parameters will open the Signal Type Editor window for signals and buses or the Truth Table tab for ROM logic. You can also access the properties for each channel by clicking the same style button in the grid next to each channel name. The button with the opposite pencil to the right of that will open the Parameters window. Show lets you determine which data you want to show in the grid columns. On the right side of the Pattern window is the Plot window showing the defined patterns. At the top of that window are three options for editing the window. The drop-down that defaults to Auto will let you automatically or manually scale the window. With Manual selected, Show allows you to enter the time scale and From lets you select the start time of the window. You can enter a value between 10 nanoseconds per division to 50 hours per division in Show and any value up to 500 hours in From. Next, we'll talk about the channel grid. After the name column, the channel selection column and the two buttons we've already discussed in the first column is the output column. Depending on the type selected in the type column, the options will change. PP stands for push-pull, which is a full swing 1-0 signal. OD means open drain and the signal will swing between 0 and Z. OS stands for open source and the signal swings between 1 and Z. The last is TS, which is three state. The signal can either be 0, Z, or 1. The next column is idle, which will set the value that the channel will output when the tool is not running. You can set this to initial, zero, one, or z. The next column is the type column, which will hold up to three parameters that will change depending on if it's a single channel, bus, or ROM logic. Constant is where the signal is set to either one, z, or zero and holds that value. Clock will output a square wave with the frequency and output type selected. The other two parameters are duty cycle and phase. Pulse will send a pulse signal depending on the clock division and counter set. This works similar to the clock, but with more customization. Start allows you to select the initial state of the signal. Low sets the number of counts that the signal will stay low. High sets the number of counts the signal will stay high. The counter's initial value is a programmable delay. Divider divides the 100 MHz clock into the clock that will be used to count. Divider init sets the number of clock cycles before the divider starts. Random generates random data. You can adjust the frequency at which the bits change state. Custom lets you define your own signal as you want it. Frequency determines the sample frequency for the signal. Samples sets the number of samples your signal has. Once this is set, you can click on the small plot window to set each sample, or you can use the data table. You can also import as a custom patterns file or export the data as a CSV, text, or TDMS file, or as an image. Buses have the same base options as single channels, but with some additional options. Binary counter is a simple binary or gray counter, which counts up and down by only allowing one bit to change at a time. You can set the frequency and the initial value where the counter will start and whether it counts up or down. Once the max value is reached, the counter will start over from the beginning, ignoring the initial value. Johnson counter is the same as a ring counter and is a variation of gray code, which adds one channel at a time starting with either the least significant bit or most significant bit until all channels are on. Each channel is then turned off one at a time until all channels are off. Walking 0-1 counters walk the respective counter values sequentially through all the bits one at a time. The frequency determines the rate at which the bits change state. You can set the walk to start with either the least significant bit or most significant bit. Length lets you set how many counts the 0-1 will last. Now that we've gone through all the parameters, let's do an example. Using the parameters window for each channel, set IO 15 through 12 to PP output, 0 idle, custom type, 200 Hz frequency, and 4 samples. For DIO 12, set sample 1 to 1 and leave the other samples to 0. The remaining three channels are set similarly. For DIO 13, set sample 2 to 1. DIO 14, set sample 3 to 1. And for DIO 15, set sample 4 to 1. For the bus, open the parameters window and set the type to custom. Output to PP, idle to 1, 1.6 kHz frequency and samples to 32. Starting with row 1 under the column, we can enter the bus value for that sample. How we enter this value is determined in the bus properties window. We selected decimal before, so that's how we'll enter it. We'll set row 1 to 253, row 2 to 251, 
row 3 through 7 to 255, row 8 to 127, and continue until all rows are filled with the correct values. All of that was to set up our seven segment display. Now let's connect the digital channels to the seven segment display. Click run and you should see one, two, three, four. Now you know how the pattern generator can be used to analyze digital circuits. The next video will cover the protocol analyzer. Subscribe to stay up to date to Digilance products and services. Thanks for watching.